Um, I'm interviewing Professor Stanley Plotkin. He's an emeritus pro pro professor at the University of Pennsylvania, and he's also a consultant who consults, who, well, who gives advice to vaccine companies via his consulting group, Vaxo Consult LLC. A uh, vaccine is an antigen or a collection of antigens that induces an immune response that is protective against uh, a um, microbial agent or, for that matter, uh, against other forms of disease like cancers. Well, clearly, many diseases have been epidemic uh, or continue to be epidemic and cause morbidity and mortality, and vaccines prevent, uh, uh, in most cases, both morbidity and mortality. Well, uh, I'm not sure I can uh, tr truly answer that. I have tried to establish vaccinology as a separate field um, starting many years ago. And I've been involved in the development of several vaccines and continue to um, help develop others. Rubella, rotavirus, rabies, cytomegalovirus, um, and um, giving advice about a number of others like HIV and mm -hmm. uh, um, Lyme disease and um, quite a few. Well, rubella is a virus actually um, may originally uh, in, in uh, many millions of years ago may have been a, an insect uh, transmitted virus but anyway it circulates now between humans and it causes fever and a rash uh, in um, uh, most people infected uh, and when the infected person is a pregnant woman mm -hmm. it passes from uh, the mother to the fetus and cause uh, severe abnormalities in the um, uh, in the child or, for that matter, uh, stillbirth or uh, abortion. I think we had a pretty good idea that antibodies uh, would be uh, protective and uh, the task was to in induce an antibody response that would be high enough and prolonged enough uh, to protect women um, uh, when they became pregnant. Mm -hmm. So um, during the vaccine discovery stage, how long did you wait to determine if the immune, the antibody induced response was long enough? So did you vaccinate mothers and wait for a year or did you wait for two years before you rolled it out to the community? No, the first trials were done in, in adults and uh, children mm -hmm. to see if we could uh, induce uh, good immune responses and uh, then uh, subsequently um, uh, the vaccine was used in, in women but the point is to vaccinate women before they become pregnant mm -hmm. uh, although uh, well the concern was that vaccination during pregnancy uh, might uh, in itself uh, cause fetal abnormalities. Yeah. In fact, that does not occur because the vaccine virus is attenuated, mm -hmm. but the vaccine is used in children uh, to immunize them later in life and in adolescent uh, girls uh, to um, uh, immunize them before they become pregnant later. Uh, and in men, to prevent them from transmitting the virus to women. Well, actually, it appears that a single dose probably protects women uh, for life, mm -hmm. uh, but um, 
uh, uh, basically because in public health use, uh, it's a good idea to uh, give um, uh, give the vaccine twice in the context of measles, mumps, and rubella in, in countries, or measles and rubella uh, mm-hmm. throughout the world. Uh, and the, the, the second dose uh, gives a second chance to uh, immunize those few women who may not have responded to the first dose. So I'm not sure it's a booster in the usual sense. Mm -hmm. Uh, It may be more making up for uh, any um, failures to immunize or failures to respond to the first dose. Well, that's uh, easy to answer. Um, Malaria is obviously far ahead of tuberculosis and HIV. Mm-hmm. For tuberculosis, we currently do not have a good idea as to what the correlate of protection is. Mm-hmm. Uh, for HIV, we have some ideas, but they are far from um, uh, being clearly demonstrated. As for malaria, we have at least two vaccines that have shown some efficacy, and we know that antibodies to the circumsporozoite protein and cellular responses uh, in the liver. Um, so malaria is clearly the, um, uh, the, the one that will be uh, available uh, first mm-hmm. and uh, currently uh, is being explored in, in Africa and elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like you said, for TB, we don't have a correlate of protection as yet, but there are many vaccines that are in the p- pipeline. So, what do you think the best type of vaccine would be in that? Would it have to be a whole cell attenuated bac- uh, bacteria or a peptide based vaccine? And what type of immunity do you think it should induce? Should it only induce T cells or both B and T cells and antibody responses? That is, uh, those questions are actually difficult to answer. Obviously, we have BCG that protects children from disseminated tuberculosis, Mm -hmm. uh, and it it does that largely through a a T cell response. Uh, But the the critical issue, as far as I'm concerned, is um, how to prevent uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis from invading macrophages Mm -hmm. where they become latent. And uh, although I'm not a specialist in the area, Mm -hmm. uh, I've not seen uh, any data that, um, or any experimental vaccines that are able to do that. Now, I don't mean to say that a tuberculosis vaccine is impossible Mm -hmm. uh, to develop, but I think uh, we, we need a lot more basic experimentation uh, before um, we will have a successful uh, vaccine. Yes, I agree with you. <laughs> um, so for um, HIV, for example, in a lower middle income country like South Africa and most of Sub-Saharan Africa, where do you think the target group should be for an HIV vaccine? when we do have an well, HIV vaccine? I think the uh, ideal vaccine could be given in early adolescence mm-hmm. uh, to uh, prevent uh, sexual infection uh, later in life. Uh, and I, I think of, well, let me put it this way, that uh, a couple of critical trials are being launched in, in Africa Mm -hmm. Uh, which I think will determine whether or not an HIV vaccine is feasible. Uh, The uh, approach of pox virus followed by a protein uh, or adenovirus vectored followed by a protein, uh, surface, uh, the envelope protein, uh, those trials are uh, uh, either started or will be started shortly. And... um, that's going to tell us, I think, whether uh, it is possible to develop an HIV vaccine. Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. the trial in Thailand gave us some hope that um, that non-traditional immune responses uh, might be protective. And I mean, I, I the Thai trial did show us that. However, uh, there's also the issue of multiple exposures. Uh, most vaccines, or most diseases for which we have vaccines, uh, don't involve multiple repeated exposures, yeah. whereas uh, HIV uh, it does involve that. So uh, to say the least, uh, it's, a, it's a difficult uh, infection to prevent. Mm -hmm. um, I don't mean to say that it's impossible. I look forward to the results of those trials, but uh, I don't think anyone can claim absolute confidence that they're going to work. Well, C and CMV is the most common congenital infection. Um, it, it, in a way, uh, certainly today, causes more morbidity than uh, rubella, uh, which is gradually being controlled. Uh, cytomegalovirus is ubiquitous. Um, uh, in, um, in developed countries, uh, about 50% of women um, enter pregnancy seronegative. Mm -hmm. uh, in uh, developing countries, the percentage is much smaller. In seronegative women, if they're exposed, uh, if they're infected, uh, there's about a 30 40 percent that their uh, infant will be damaged, ranging from severe phenomena such as microencephaly uh, to uh, deafness. Um, Whereas in seropositive women, uh, the, the rate of the infection is poorly described, but um, f fortunately seems to be much less. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, in seropositive women uh, can um, transmit virus to uh, the fetus. And so, as I said before, it's the most common congenital infection throughout the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I have been uh, to develop a vaccine against it off and on uh, mm -hmm. since the 1970s. There's no, there's no vaccine yet. There are many experimental vaccines. I um, uh, have written extensively about them. Uh, and they are being tested, and I uh, obviously have great hopes for them, but mm -hmm. we don't have a vaccine usable yet. Okay. And are you receiving, well, based on your experience, is there a lot of input in terms of policymakers to have this incorporated once the vaccine is ready? Well, there is a great deal of attention being paid amongst obstetricians and pediatricians to the disease. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, uh, um, at this point, uh, let's say one, two, three. Yes, all of the major manufacturers have projects to develop CMV vaccines, plus uh, a number of other laboratories. So there is a long list of candidate vaccines. but. They are still in uh, phase one, phase two trials. Well, wild type polio is, is caused by circulating strains that have been circulating uh, for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. uh, vaccine type of polio is because of mutations of the oral vaccine viruses. Well, the oral va vaccine is a live replicating virus, which is given orally, replicates in the, in the pharynx and in the intestine, 
and induces a local and a general immune response. The inactivated vaccine is a killed, um, whether that is the three polio viruses are killed, uh, and they uh, those vaccines induce antibody responses uh, that uh, protect against the spread of the wild polio virus uh, from the intestine to the to the central nervous system. Mm -hmm. And um, they are complementary. That is, um, after long last, uh, the WHO has finally adopted the use of both vaccines, something which I've recommended for many years, uh, but um, that's finally being done. And um, the advantage of the kill vaccine is that it works uh, even in, in tropical climates, and um, uh, and there's no risk. To okay. Um, so, are the immune responses um, comparable between the two vaccines? So, do they elicit the same overall level of antibodies? Well, actually, the kill vaccine generally produces a level of antibody. But um, the point is that uh, the killed vaccine induces antibodies virtually 100% of the time, mm -hmm. um, but it does not induce local immunity in the gut, uh, whereas the oral vaccine does induce local immunity in the gut. However, that is not always true in tropical climates. Mm -hmm. In other words, the vaccine works uh, much better where there's no interference um, in the intestine, mm -hmm. uh, and therefore, uh, there's, it's been problematic uh, in, uh, in you throughout the world because it doesn't always successfully immunize. Mm -hmm. That's why it has to be given multiple times. Well, so uh, that, first of all, depends on, on uh, the induction of memory B cells. And um, there are quite, there, the differences between vaccines are quite striking. Uh, for example, uh, the human papillomavirus vaccine against uh, cervical and other cancers uh, it does not need a lot of uh, boosting um, because the virus like particles used to make the vaccine are very potent in uh, inducing memory B cell responses. Mm -hmm. Conversely, um, uh, pertussis is a, or pertussis vaccines uh, are pr protective, but they do not produce prolonged immunity. And uh, the, the, the reason is that uh, um, uh, antibodies are not uh, produced continuously by, by plasma blasts in the bone marrow. Now, we, we don't have a complete explanation as to the differences between uh, antigens that result in, um, uh, in uh, persistence or lack of persistence. Uh, but I think it's pretty clear that uh, it depends on the T cell responses. Now, T cell responses uh, are uh, known to control uh, virus or bacterial replication. But in addition, they have important functions in uh, assisting antibody responses. So if you don't have a, a good T cell induction, uh, you may not have a good B cell induction. Uh, and so uh, there are um, uh, clear differences between vaccines. Hepatitis A is another, another example of a vaccine that gives tremendously long uh, immune responses and uh, protection. On the other hand, uh, a mumps vaccine does not. 
and uh, this is, has become a critical problem in vaccinology, that is to say, how to induce longer lasting responses where, or in vaccines that uh, do not do so at the moment. So the HPV vaccine has been rolled out in many African countries to um, pre-adolescent girls specifically between the ages of 10 and 14, that's roughly around fifth grade. And there's been growing evidence that the strains that are actually part of the vac HPV vaccine are not, one, are not the prevalent um, circulating strains in different countries. So um, do you have any idea if the HPV vaccine is protective against strains that are actually not part of the virus-like particles? Well, so this is a, a compl complicated question. Mm -hmm. uh, first, um, HPV vaccines were developed against type 16 and 18. Mm -hmm. And uh, those are the most prevalent types th throughout the world. However, uh, it is true that in some countries, the additional serotypes are more prevalent than they are, let's say, in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the companies developing those vaccines have taken account of that and there is now a nine valent uh, HPV vaccine. Mm -hmm. So uh, that should do better in, uh, in countries where multiple serotypes are prevalent. Uh, but you know, this is a, uh, a biological issue uh, that um, can't be, well, it might be completely solved in, in, in the future, but it, it's also a problem for pneumococcal vaccines because mm -hmm. there are multiple serotypes. And all that one can do is to add serotypes as they become important. Mm -hmm. So for pneumococcal vaccine, it turned out that type 19 uh, was important, so they had to add uh, a, a type 19 uh, uh, to uh, make sure that that, uh, that the vaccine would be protective. And for HPV, I think ultimately uh, the nine valent vaccine will become uh, the routine vaccine. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, this is a problem where multiple serotypes of an agent uh, exist but it's not um, uh, an insoluble uh, problem. Mm -hmm. Well, f f first let me say that I, I don't regard myself as being uh, 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 in uh, cancer, mm -hmm. but um, I do work with a company that is making DNA vaccines. And one of the things that they've done, which is uh, extremely interesting, is uh, uh, also based on human papillomavirus. Uh, the human papillomavirus has two uh, proteins that are oncogenic, that is, cause transformation. Mm -hmm. and, and therefore are responsible for cervical and other cancers. And the, uh, this company has made a DNA, a DNA vaccine against those two proteins. Uh, that is to say, DNA coding for those two proteins are used as vaccines in women who already have cancer. And they have had... Uh, uh, at least moderate success in causing the cancers to re revert. Okay. Uh, so this is, I would say, so far the best example of um, vaccines against cancer. Now, unfortunately, in other types of cancer, uh, not, uh, well, for example, let's say breast cancer, um, we don't clearly have antigens that we can immunize against, but we, but there are some cancer antigens that we know are uh, in, uh, produced only by cancer cells. And the effort is to 
immunize against them. But the problem is that the immune system um, tends to prevent immune responses to those antigens. And that's why so-called checkpoint inhibitors uh, are now being investigated to try to reduce the body's tendency to prevent an immune response to an antigen that is close to self-antigens. Anyway, uh, I am not pessimistic that, uh, that we will uh, be unable uh, to develop uh, cancer vaccines, but there's a lot of basic science that has to be done before, uh, before we can reach that uh, goal. Mm -hmm. And uh, as long as, <laughs> as I'm around, uh, I'll give whatever help I can, but this is a burgeoning field. And, um, and I should, of course, of course, also mention the hepatitis B vaccine mm -hmm. is also an anti-cancer anti vaccine. That's so, to protect against liver cancer, amongst other cancers that may arise due to have B infection. Yes. yes. And also, a papilloma virus protects oropharyngeal cancers mm -hmm. uh, that occur widely. Thank you. Thank you for your interest. Thank you so much for taking time to be interviewed by Aminopedia.